welcome back guys and now I thought for change let's look at something a little bit mathematical now we'll study about rate okay rate is one of the most important tools when you are studying epidemiology so that is epi among people study so study among people epidemiology okay so rate rate is one of the tools which is used to study the diseases other things are uh, the tools include okay so the tools one of the tools is rate we have two more another one is ratio and we have the third one that's proportion okay now what is rate exactly if you go to physics in physics rate is something that's changing per time we're not at physics we're studying prevent medicine so what's rate rate supposed to have four components okay it should have a numerator okay it has a numerator then it should have a denominator and it should have a time specifier okay and it should have a multiplier okay so you should have a numerator you should have a denominator you should have a time specifier and you should have a multiplier the four essentials of rate now why yeah one more thing the numerator belongs to the denominator okay so the numerator should be a part of the denominator this is the belongs to symbol if you don't know now let's for example take something we're all familiar with we'll take the death rate okay so death rate death rate is number of deaths in a specified year in a given population okay this is the numerator okay so what numerator then we need a denominator mid year population okay at that year okay here we are specifying specifying the year so we now have our denominator and we have our time specifier and then we need a multiplier into thousand this is how your death rate is calculated okay now again if you break it apart you can see that we have a numerator we have a denominator have the numerator and the denominator and the numerator is a part of that denominator okay the number of deaths in a specified year in a given population we are not considering the deaths outside of that the population outside of the population that we are studying we are only concerned with the deaths inside the given population and hence numerator belongs to the denominator now you might ask is there a case when the numerator is not the part of the denominator yes of course when we consider ratios okay so imagine we consider the sex ratio the most common ratio will come across in psm sex ratio what's that we take the number of girls and we divide it by the number of boys and we get some around 991 is to 1000 not the actual value stay updated this is just an example so here you can clearly see that girls do not belong to the boys population of course that's the common sense but in this case <coughs> the deaths do belong into the given population that we're studying so a numerator a denominator and the numerator is a part of the denominator okay so three conditions mid-year population the time is specified 
So we are not considering the deaths outside of that specified year. We have taken a time that is that year and we're concerned with the deaths during that year and the population during that year. And then we have a multiplier into 1000. Now why into 1000? Why? It's pretty simple. Uh, we'll have to again take a mathematical example for you to understand it. <clears throat> Imagine there are 1000 people. This is the mid-year population. Okay. And in this 1000 people, say 10 people died. So there were 10 deaths in that given population during that specified year. Now, if you do all the maths again without the multiplier, so we are not using them. We have 10 by 1000, 0 0.01. So that would be 0 0.01 death rate. You can't have 0.01 percent dying. Okay. Either you have a whole person dead or you have no person dead. You can't express death in a fraction. You can't have 0.01 percent dying. You can't have 0.99 of a person dying. Okay. Either you have one person dead or you don't have a person dead at all. So what we do is we use the multiplier. So when we use the multiplier, thousand, you cancel this out. You have 10 deaths per thousand population. Okay. See, now you have a whole number. Now you can express deaths like 10 people dying. You can't say that. Okay, bro, 0.01% died for every 1% taken into account. No, not possible. You can't say that 0.1% died for every 10 people surveyed. Okay. You can't. So hence we use a multiplier. We use a multiplier to give the mathematical result that we are getting some applicable meaning. So to make it easy for us to understand and to make the people understand. If you were to say that the death rate is 0 0.01. Okay. So every one person 0.01 percent. No, it's difficult to understand. But if you say that for every thousand person, 10 deaths are occurring more imaginable, more understandable, more feasible and hence the use of multiplier. So this was all about the rate and the mathematics and the science behind it. You have four components again, a quick revision. Okay. You have four components. You have a numerator, you have a denominator. The numerator should be a part of the denominator. You have a time specifier and you have a multiplier. Now again, the multiplier, if the population is huge or the population. So imagine instead of 10 by 1000, you had one by 1000. In that case, you can use a multiplier as 1000. So imagine you had the population to be 10,000 and you had one and you were getting 0 0.1. This would be the result. Even if you multiplied with 1000, the multiplier in such a case to increase your feasibility, you can take 10,000 a multiplier. But then again, you have to specify that this death is per 10,000 population. So you are supposed to specify this. Yeah. And hence, that's how the multiplier works. So guys, I hope you understood why we use rate. More examples are like you have death rates, you have birth rates and you have infant mortality rates. Okay. So, so many rates are there. Again, rates are further classified into. Okay. You have rates. Yeah. Non-standard or non-specific. Then you have specific and then you have standard. Okay. This one is actually crude. Okay. Other terms work also, but they call it crude. We will also call it crude. You have crude, standard and non-standard. Now crude death rate, the examples would be, they're not specific. So like death rates, birth rates, all these are crude. Now, when you add a specific criteria to each of them, okay, 
they become specific so you have death rates due to TB more specific okay we are talking about only the TB specified population or RTA deaths due to road traffic accidents so like that or one more example would be under 5 mortality rate okay talking about mortality rate would be crude now when you specify a you specify criteria it becomes specific now the standard you use this to compare internationally okay so when you are comparing between one country and another country you need a standardized standardized specific set of rules due to which you can compare between it two countries because both countries might not be having the same condition and they might not be having the same condition throughout the country itself okay so it becomes not feasible it will be a comparing apples to oranges so you standardize it you provide some specific set of rules to make the whole data collection uniform that makes the comparison feasible so you are no longer comparing apple to oranges you are comparing oranges to oranges itself and they can be done by direct or indirect methods okay so international standards again you have direct methods and you have indirect methods so this is the whole thing about the rates the maths the science the examples the classifications on all those hope you understood what i aim to teach you through this video about rates because it's one of the three important tools of epidemiological studies okay i'll see you in my next videos subscribe to stay updated thank you for watching